Is there any reference to this war in the Quran? Yes, there are. We want to turn to only one verse of the Quran, only one at this time. There are others. I gave a lecture in, where was it? In Mauritius, Mauritius yes, on nuclear war. And that lecture should be on my YouTube uh, channel uh, on an Islamic view of nuclear, nuclear weapons, I believe, was the topic. And in that lecture, I quoted several verses of the Quran pertaining to nuclear war. So please check out that lecture. But this verse is in Surah Al-Isra of the Quran. Surah number 17. And Allah says, بَعَدَعُوزِ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ He says, وَإِمْ مِنْ قَرْيَةٍ إِلَّا نَحْنُ مُهْلِكُوهَا قَبْلَ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُوهَا عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا كَانَ ذَلِكَ فِي الْكِتَابِ مَسْتُورًا None will escape. Every town and every city will be destroyed before the last day, before the end of the world. This event will take place before the end of the world. Qabla yawmil qiyamah. And those, which, with those towns and cities which escape destruction will be punished with great, great, great punishment. And this is something inscribed in the book. This, is, this will come to pass. That has to be the great war. Oh yes. Where every town and every city is destroyed and those which do not face destruction will, be punished, will face terrible punishment. That has to be the great war. So there is a reference in the Quran to the great war. And the great war can only have this kind of destruction if there are Weapons of mass destruction used in that war because conventional weapons will not kill 99% of all combatants. It has to be nuclear weapons. They are those who have been trying far more vigorously than is comfortable for me to persuade me that there are no nuclear weapons. <laughs> well, what happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki was a dream? Mm -hmm. Of course there are nuclear weapons and there are thermonuclear weapons and there are other weapons of mass destruction we probably don't know about. And we are now on the verge of that nuclear war in which 99% of all competence will be killed. Why? Because they're fighting for the mountain of gold. The Salafi says that since Allah and his messenger and the Aslaf never offered an interpretation or a ta'wil of this prophecy, we are obliged to wait for a mountain of the metal to come out from underneath the river. That is Salafi Islam. And I don't have any boxing gloves. I am not being disrespectful to you because there are many Salafi who are my students. We say no. We say this is religious symbolism. And I have offered an interpretation uh, of this, uh, this prophecy of Nabi Muhammad I did it, I offered it several years ago and the reason why I could offer this interpretation was because Allah in his kindness allowed me to have an education that the normal scholar of Islam does not have. I studied international relations for one year a postgraduate course in international relations at the Institute of International Relations of the University of the West Indies. Because the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Trinidad and Tobago said to me, we would like to have you as an officer, but we want you to go back and do this course. So I went to the University of the West Indies, the Institute of International Relations, and I studied there for one year. 
And among the subjects that I studied, in addition to international politics and international law and the history of international relations, the diplomacy and so on, was international economics. In fact, my little sister came after me and she'd done a PhD in international economics. So I often consult with her. But in addition to studying international economics, I had to study international monetary economics. And when I went into the classroom, I took the Quran with me, of course, in my heart. And because my teacher, Mawlana Fadlur Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah, had trained me how to study the Quran, I was able to use the Quran to recognize that this was bogus, this money was bogus. Yes. And then I came first in the class after one year, and uh, they were all looking down at me, the Pakistani graduate, and this was a graduate from the Sorbonne, and this was a graduate from the London School of Economics, and these were graduates from Canadian and American universities, and this poor fellow was a Pakistani graduate, so they were all looking down at me. Um, but at the end of the year, I came first in the exams because of the Quran. And then I got a scholarship to go to Geneva to study at the Graduate Institute of International Studies. And over there, I had so many quarrels with my teacher teaching me international economics, uh, monetary economics in particular, that eventually he said to me, Mr. Hussein, you don't have to attend my class, you know. <laughs> Meaning, I don't want you in my class. Just write this exam at the end of the year. So I couldn't attend his class. <laughs> And at the end of the year, I wrote the exam and I passed the exam. But I already was aware that this system was bogus. Because of this training that I had in international relations, in international monetary economics, in international trade and development, in international law, in international politics, in diplomacy, in the history of international affairs, because of this training I had, which the scholars of Islam do not have, I was able to understand the hadith. That a, a mountain of gold is going to come out from underneath the river. It came out in 1974. And I offered my interpretation and about, I don't know, 90, 95% of those who have listened have accepted my view. And that little 5 or 10% out there with boxing gloves hitting me from every single direction realize that they're fighting a losing battle because people are not persuaded by their view that you have to wait for a mounting of the metal to come out from beneath the river. What happened in 1974 was that Henry Kissinger waited until the price of oil had risen from $3 a barrel to 12 and the Arab oil producing countries are all very happy. King Faisal is very happy. And Zulfikar Ali Bhutto in Pakistan was very happy that the money is coming now, the money is coming. And Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and one of the last leaders that Pakistan had was Zulfikar Ali Bhutto. The rest are all schoolboys. Zulfikar Ali Bhutto and Faisal teamed up to form an alliance. That this money which is now coming in must be put to the use of the Ummah of Muhammad That was the brilliance of Sabuto, Benazir's father. He did many wicked things. You don't have to remind me of that. He did many wicked things, but this was good, what he did. To bring that alliance of Pakistan with Saudi Arabia, and then they pulled off the Lahore Islamic Summit Conference in February of 1974. But I don't have the time today to take you into that glorious history. What Henry Kissinger did was to go to Riyadh. He was Secretary of State of the United States of America. Nixon is still the president. And to offer a deal to Saudi Arabia. And because... Faisal Rahimahullah, despite having a good heart, he had only peanuts in his head. That's right. When you have only peanuts in your head, 
you, you can be taken for a ride. That's what happened in Syria. That's what happened in Libya. They were taken for a ride with peanuts in their head, waging a bogus jihad in Syria, waging a bogus jihad in Libya as a consequence of which NATO now controls Libya. Henry Kissinger said to Faisal, what you're getting is peanuts. You're going to get much more. All that you have to do is make an agreement with us that you will sell oil for only US dollars. And if you do that, you'll see how much more money you'll get. And Kissinger was, of course, correct. And Faisal fell for it. And then Faisal de declared that Saudi Arabia will sell the oil for only US dollars. Oh, come on, Faisal. Malik Faisal, rahimahullah, what nonsense is this? Where is your not knowledge? Where is your sense? Have you no sense? Did the religion of Islam not teach you anything, Faisal? Even if I come with gold dinar, I can't buy your oil. Dinar, which is halal, which is in the Quran, which is in the Sunnah. Have you no sense that only with US dollars I can buy oil? Don't you realize, Faisal, that you are giving the US dollar a new lease of life because it is no longer backed by gold? It's no longer redeemable in gold? When Faisal agreed to that, that no one can buy oil except with US dollars, and then the rest of the Arab oil producing countries agreed to it. And then OPEC was born in 1974. I think it was 74, if I'm wrong, please correct me. And then OPEC, all the oil producing countries, oil exporting countries in the world, all come together in this organization. And excuse my language, like a bunch of jackasses, they all agreed that they will sell oil for only US dollars. And so the US dollar was transformed in 1974 into a petrodollar. And the monetary system survived. And an ocean of oil, listen to me carefully, my brother who was the Salafi. Please listen to me. Imran Hussein is not waging war on you. Imran Hussein respects your scholarship. Imran Hussein is simply saying to you that your methodology is wrong. Please listen to me, because tomorrow it will be too late. An ocean of oil underneath the river, the river Euphrates, in 1974, an ocean of oil underneath the river began to function as a mountain of gold the petrodollar monetary system. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. The reason why I was able to offer this interpretation was because after studying Islam, I went on to study international relations and the scholars of Islam don't have that specialized knowledge that Allah allowed me. That's the only reason why I was able to offer this interpretation. But there is a big war which is coming. And that big war is because of this monetary system, which came from Karnu Shaitan, from Saudi Arabia. Because Saudi Arabia is the leader of the pact. Yes, may Allah forgive King Faisal, we like him, but that does not mean that he has to be excused for having only peanuts in his head. He violated the Sharia. He has said that even if I come with gold dinar, I cannot buy your oil, which is haram, haram, haram. Where is your sense, Faisal? May Allah have mercy on him and forgive him, but this is Karno Shaitan. This is the people, the age of shaitan, the generation of shaitan, who have brought into being this monetary system, the petrodollar monetary system, so that an ocean of oil underneath the river is now functioning as a mountain of gold, exactly as the Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, 
in Sahih Bukhari. We have just a few minutes left and I'm running out of time. I'll have to continue the subject next week. We have no time for phone calls today. Sorry about that. There are many Hindus who are listening to the signs of the time lectures. There are many Christians who are listening to the signs of the time lectures. And you are our brothers. Yes, you are our brothers. We have respect for Hinduism. Yes, I have respect for Hinduism. I have respect for Christianity. I'm not here with boxing gloves against you. I want to build an alliance to defend the religious way of life. The big war is coming. And that big war is because of the mountain of gold. Russia is leading the challenge. And Russia is supported by China. And with Russia and China, there is South Africa, there is Brazil, and there is India. Although India seems now to have jumped into the camp of Israel. Hmm. BRICS, it is called. And BRICS is the cause of the nuclear war which is coming. BRICS is a challenge to the petrodollar monetary system. The Prophet said that they will fight for that mountain of gold, and that is the war that is coming. And when Saudi Arabia amasses all the Sunni countries, the schoolboys who lead the world of Sunni Islam, to form an alliance which they say it's against terrorism, but it's against Iran. Oh yes, it's against Iran. They will not invite Iran, no. And this alliance, once it is sealed, and you take a Pakistani former chief of staff of the armed forces and make him the commander and chief of this Sunni alliance. I don't know about 40 states. And then you invite Donald Trump. <laughs> then you invite Donald Trump to Saudi Arabia to meet with all of them and to dance with all of them with a sword in his hand. It's comic, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it's comic. No, it's not coming. It's serious. What they're doing is trying to forge an alliance between NATO and the schoolboys who rule over the Sunni, Sunni world of Islam. That's what they're doing. And uh, I believe that the master plan, led by Karno Shaitan, Saudi Arabia, led by Karno Shaitan, Saudi Arabia, led by Karno Shaitan, Saudi Arabia, is for all of them to land their troops in the north of Syria. Qatar doesn't want to be a part of that. No, because Qatar is too exposed. It's a little, it's a little peninsula jutting out into the sea facing Iran. And when the big war starts, Qatar will be finished within five minutes. That's why Qatar is resisting. Qatar knows Saudi Arabia better than Saudi Arabia knows Saudi Arabia because both Qatar and Saudi Arabia have been at the forefront of terrorism funding and arming and training and providing all the weapons and so on for the terrorists who are waging the bogus jihad. So Qatar and Saudi Arabia are sisters. The difference, however, is Qatar is exposed. Qatar is afraid of that big war that's coming. But Saudi Arabia is not afraid. No, Saudi Arabia is led by a reckless little schoolboy now who is taking Saudi Arabia to ruins. So now the plan appears to me, and I hope I am wrong, I hope I'm wrong. I pray I'm wrong. The plan appears to me for all of these Sunni, so-called Sunni states, including that bogus Islamic state called Pakistan, for all of them to land their troops in the north of Syria to say, we are fighting terrorism. <laughs> Who are you fooling? And then NATO will also try and land all their troops there. And I think this is what the Prophet was speaking of when he speaks about room, meaning room of the West, landing under 80 flags. <clears throat> if this happens, then you remember this lecture and the one which is on YouTube, my interpretation. This is going to lead to the Great War, not something in Ukraine and not something in Korea. <clears throat> but exactly as Prophet Muhammad has prophesied, this is going to lead to the great war. The war which is being fought for the mountain of gold. This is our interpretation. So you have our interpretation and you have the interpretation 
or the response of Salafi Islam is for you to choose who is correct and who is sleeping. You are the ones who will have to choose. I am not here with boxing gloves against the Salafi. This is a learned discussion and it should be pursued in a respectful way because we are dealing with knowledge. Yes. And let me repeat that I have Salafis who are my students. Yes. If this big war is to take place, it can take place at any time, how do we respond to it? What do we do? We end with this statement of Nabi Muhammad wasalam, who said that the Muslims or the believers must not touch that goal. Meaning that we must resist, we must resist the electronic and monetary system which is coming. How do we resist it? What should be response? That will be my topic for Geneva. I leave you now. May Allah bless you. If you turn to the Quran and you turn to the scriptures and you turn to Nabi Muhammad wasalam, and with integrity in your heart, you seek now to understand the world today and to respond to it appropriately. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.